God in heaven, we give you all glory. God in heaven, we worship you. We give you all because we are yours. Thank you for being with us from the beginning of this service. It has been an inspiring service. We are believing you as we reflect together in your work, word. Pray God Almighty that will speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit of God, this assignment is yours. Use your servant this morning to accomplish your purpose. May your children go out of this place satisfied. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 9? Today is a mission Sunday. All collection will go to mission work. As we have been doing, we will continue to do till the day he will say to us, come and rest. Today before us, the topic is when he saw the multitude. He was moved with compassion on them. When Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Reminder to all of us that at one point Christ made a move out of compassion to save us. Matthew chapter 9 put your eyes in verse 35. Verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. May the Lord bless his word into our hearts in Jesus' name. I don't know what dropped in your heart, in your mind, cause of reading this passage of the Bible. Our Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Master, the owner of the universe, the Creator, our Redeemer, we are told that 
God the Father sent his son Jesus into the world. If the world was perfect then, God wouldn't have sent his son to come here. But something happened. And you trespass at the Garden of Eden. Man who was created perfect. Man who was said to be a friend of God. Failed. All true men are born sinners. And to restore that fellowship, that unity, God decided to send his son to stand in the gap between a holy father and humans who are sinners. No one is qualified to serve as a bridge except a sinless Jesus to stand in the gap. No wonder the condition in the Bible. As many that will believe in Jesus, they have crossed over from death to life eternal. So, this morning, the purpose of our gathering and of this message this morning is to remind us that all of us are sinners and needed a savior. especially those who are still lost even at this moment that I'm talking. You need a savior. And so, we have an account by Matthew here of Christ Jesus, the Bible says, who went out preaching the gospel of the kingdom. in cities. Anybody who is doing this work in their city truly from his heart he is doing the work of the master. Anyone who is doing it in the village truly from his heart is doing the work of the master. Why? Because we saw Jesus who went city and villages preaching the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says he went preaching and healing those who are sick. But then something happened. If you look at our text this morning, verse 30, 35. Healing the people healing their diseases. But, verse 36, verse 36 says, but when he saw the multitude, if there is anything I want us to look at, number one is the condition of the multitude. It's the condition of the people. And 
And the Bible tells us in that same verse that he was moved with compassion for them. And the reason is because they were weary. They were burdened. They were sorrowful. But I like the other translation that was said, Jesus saw them fainted. Ah. If somebody faint, he's half, half what? Half what? Half dead. And because of that, Jesus was moved with compassion. Fainted. That's number one. And the Bible tells us that the condition of these people again that they were scattered abroad. We are scattered. In short, in our own context today, when you see people moving from Nigeria, out of Nigeria, and into Nigeria, and the rest, you know that something is wrong somewhere. It could be you in particular. It could be as a group. It could be all of us as a nation. There is something that you and I will lack that will make me leave my own house to another person's house. That will make you to leave this country for another country. That will make another country to leave her country into Nigeria. People scattered abroad. People scattered as if there is no headway again. People scattered because there is need for one thing or the other. So cut across all languages, tribes, provided there is something that you are pursuing, then you know for sure that it will take you and I to look for that thing with every zeal. The multitude, as the condition to where Jesus saw them, they are people compared to a fainted person, somebody who needed help. And the condition of these people again, as we saw. In the text we read that they are scattered. And the third point, still on that verse 36, the Bible says, as sheep without a shepherd. The condition of these people, three, the last one, sheep without a shepherd. And you know, a sheep without a shepherd, then you know what it entails for the sheep. Anything can happen. So this multitude are there 
as though there is no shepherd. As though there is no somebody that will guide them, that will direct them, that will advise them, that will counsel them, that will tell them the right path to follow. Condition of this multitude. That's what you saw. But then, beloved, century ago, there was plenty of what? Of belief. That man can change things. Even up to today, our belief is that man can change, in short, everything. But that is foul. That is not true. Because we saw with the change in what? science, technology, and education. But yet, we are still where we are, spiritually. Let me again remind us that the beginning of another new millennium brought another wave of what? Of another belief that, see, everything is going to be well. Not knowing even the technology does not help. In changing man, spiritually, People invent and reinvent things so that we have a better what? A better world. But even with that, what is happening in the world is the same science and technology that is what? Crumbling. Killing. the world that we are now living in today. Remember Russia and Ukraine. Come and see technology at work through of us. Come and see technology at work. With all this, man still needs his Savior to make him acceptable before God and before men. Only Jesus that can make that difference in the life of a person. The truth is that man's best effort in changing this world have proven to be futile, true, simply because he cannot change himself. He can't change himself. I can't change myself. You can't change yourself. But Christ Jesus can do that because he's the bridge between God the Father, the Creator, and also his own people. Jesus was moved with compassion on them. Why? Because he saw them as fainted people. He saw them scattered abroad. He saw them as sheep without a shepherd. It does not stop there. I cherish and I love the presentation of Matthew here through the Holy Spirit. That said, when God was going, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, cities into villages, he came to a particular point and he saw multitude. And I define multitude as people in good number. 
but you know loss spiritually and i define the word compassion compassion is more than for you to you know to sympathize with somebody but compassion you empathize in compassion you go in in compassion you don't stand uh, no afar and say aya compassion is that you empathize you you go in you put your leg in the shoe of the person by the time you feel the pain then you know how to pray well by the time you feel the pain you know how to carry his hands or to carry him jesus did not only see the condition of the people fainted scattered abroad unlike sheep without a shepherd but the bible tells us that he was moved with compassion not with sympathy but he was moved empathizing with them and to empathize is to go into a point you want to help the person carry that load that was what we saw in the life physically materially i just shared at the beginning of the service that when we received a phone call of the father of our brother and also of simon who had an accident and also our brother who was rally you know running here and there to make sure that this wedding come to a success i saw people move not sympathizing with him but empathizing with him and always a testimony will come out of empathizing but if you sympathize it's only scratching the pen jesus was moved when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion understanding the condition of the multitude will help you and I to help better to do better that was what we saw in the life of Christ he was moved very deeply for them his heart felt the pain and misery Our Lord was filled with a sense of compassion that was to lead him even to the cross. When he paid for our sins with his own precious blood. He paid. Very practical example in my life that I've shared one time I said what it means to empathize with the people many years back when we are asked you must go to a place where there is no church no prayer house and begin to preach and to draw men to himself and I said they brought me all the way from Kagoro send me to Kefi DCC KFDCC at the office they sent me to uh, 
I've forgotten the LCC. From that LCC, they took me, I trekked two days. Slept on the way with the LO. The next day, we continue, not knowing the place they brought me was just here from Massacre Area 1. There is a road that goes to Luvu. That road goes straight right, right down there, and they call that place Kajari. Sincerely, I didn't know that place is very, very close to Abuja. Then, but when I went there, typical bush, and with people living with their families, I will never forget that experience. Stay there. In short, the people were running away from you because you are coming with a different gospel that will contradict their own gospel. There are a lot of dramas I saw. But since I entered that place, the whole one year I didn't go out of that place. One Friday, that the people, you know, woo me and said, okay, why? There is a village, there is a, a market, and they call it Massacre Market. I said, Massacre, is it the massacre I had, you know, Abuja? They said, yes, this place is very close, but there is a big river, and that river is the same Uche River that passes, you know, Zimbabwe Bridge. And each time it's rain, if you see water flow on that distance, then you know the other one right there, double the whiteness of this one. Beloved, I've experienced what it calls to love somebody to a point of dying for him. For the fact that I lived with them, their food I'm not used to. That environment I had, in short, it it takes the grace of God for one man to give me a round room like that. And up to today, that first day, it rained. And that place is a rocky whatever. Sandy up and rocky down. So that rain fell. I was lying down before I discovered with the tiredness of this thing, the whole room, you know, filled up with water. Yes, ask them please, to go to Masaka, ask people from Kajari, they will tell you the story well. That night I couldn't sleep. One year, I was there. As I say, this gospel, this message of salvation, I pray that God will not separate it from me. And it should be so. Jesus saw these people. Crowd without Christ. Crowd without hope. Multitude without hope. Multitude without direction. Multitude that even their destiny tomorrow is not a palatable one. It's not a good one. He was moved with compassion of love. Wow. Reach out. The same kind of com compassion can also steer us now towards a personal involvement in the work of mission, in the work of the gospel. Let me tell us, we have been doing well. Even as we sit here and dance, even as we sit here and celebrate, God is counting on you and me for this work of the gospel. Beloved, you are saved. To God be the glory. But many are destined for doom and destruction. Many. In short, in your family, in my family, there are still some. Open your spiritual eyes now and say, God, who, who in our family that is yet to really experience this salvation? Those are also part of the multitude. In your workplace, is the same. They are still part of what? Of the multitude that Jesus saw 
And you and I should be seeing them now with our colloquial eyes. No wonder he immediately called the attention of his disciples. You know, at this point, he was in Samaria where he met with a woman by the well. Wow! She also encountered and she ran into the town to also share. Come and see, oh, I met with somebody. She became an evangelist and she left. When she left, Jesus called the attention of the disciples now and said, Ha, ah, you said few months. What? Ha. Ah. Jesus said, Few months? No. He went further to say, see, this work is now. It's not few months. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That brought now the urgency. The urgency of this work. This work must be done now, now, now. I have passed the experience where you have the intention, okay, by the grace of God tomorrow, by the grace of God next tomorrow, I will talk to so-so -so person uh, uh, tomorrow in my workplace, by the grace of God, I will share the gospel with before you know. The man has what? In short, some died. That opportunity lost. Lost. So the urgency of this work must be now. Jesus drew the attention of the disciples. It's not in four months. But now, look. He said, look. The harvest truly is plentiful. But the laborers are what? Very few. That is a wake-up call to all of us. Now our eyes are beginning to open to the concern and also the, 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 the compassion that Jesus had when he saw the multitude. No wonder he uses the illustration of a farmer to give the disciple a picture of how the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. And you know, for a farmer, if you are truly a farmer, you know, two things are very, very important. During harvest, but two things. Number one, how big is my harvest? How big it is? Now, if it is big, there is that need for you to look for, to hire laborers, isn't it? To hire laborers into the farm. You go, wow, I can see that the harvest is much. And the second thing you will see, oh, that is of importance to a farmer, is how ripe are my crops? Are they really ripe? If they arrive, ah, you need to dash in, you need to go in with every strength, every enthusiasm to make sure that you get your crop at the right time or else, well, they arrive and fall, nobody goes to what? To pluck. They will spoil, true or false? The farmer, very concerned of these two things. Christ gave them an illustration of a farmer. Now he said, if it is true, now the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. To draw the attention of the disciples, there is need for this work. In short, to harvest souls for my kingdom. Wow. Many 
need to go in. Harvest. Or else the crop, the ripe one, will fall. And it will have no use again. This is the big challenge he put across to his disciples. Then from there he said, Yes, the task of mission is an urgent task. And there is no doubt that much work needed to be done. And it must be done without delay. But the question, who will do this work? Let me put across to you, who will do this work? Is it pastors? From the New Testament context, every true child of God has been called into the field to do the harvest. We are all called. So this brings us again to the third point. Their need for laborers, that is the second one, and we need to engage. We need to be part of the work. Some years back, I was told in a church in Korea, membership of 150 members but they are sponsoring 220 missionaries. 15 membership sponsoring 220 missionaries that were scattered all over the world to proclaim the gospel of Christ Jesus. Which magic? How manage? Beloved, if you and I will prioritize the needful right, we will be there. If all of all can prioritize, can put first thing first, we will be there. For information, we have church and other members of the church, people supporting missionaries. Today we are at 43. Put together the church and also individuals that are sponsoring EMS, working in different places. We have 43 membership because the 43rd came when the uh, children's church took it upon themselves also to sponsor an EMS worker. That is where we are now. Beloved, we are yet to be there. The urgency of this work. If truly with your spiritual eyes you, you are seeing the multitude without Christ. And indeed, we have multitude now without Christ. Many, many. Not today, we have over 7 billion man. Over 7 billion people on this planet Earth. How many are Christians? In short, in my summary, the last, the conclusion, concluding part of, of, of the points that I gave media, you see there the need and also the urgency of this work is that, see, over 7 billion people even if it means everyone, listen, everyone second, a soul is brought to Christ. It will still take us over 200 years to win the 7 billion to Christ. And you know that 
If we are to do this work, every second you have one person coming to Christ, but yet all of us, before we win the whole world, it will take 200 years. Then before those 200 years elapse, you know the population may have It's good as we dance. It's good as we sit and rejoice here. Few days ago, we were discussing concerning this building with some people. When the general secretary came here, you know, club, okay, look at magnificent building like this, one of its kind. Good. And do you know? Nobody should deceive you that this magnificent building that is standing is to the glory of God. Reason. With my spiritual eyes, I have seen many who came, sat under this roof, and they were too tall by great men of God, and they leave the arena, leave this environment transformed. Leave this environment never the same. Leave this environment as new change agent for Christ. Can that life be compared? Or can this building be compared to that life? No. And this is only for the beginning. In short, Kaura be prepared. Many will be coming. It will serve the purpose to which you erect this to stand. It will be an applause. Nobody should deceive you. They say, what you can do for God, go ahead and do it. It's not for our own glory. For God Almighty. Beloved, even as we celebrate that, on individual basis, as families, as a church, as a community, sit back and prioritize your need as a Christian. You discover at the end of the day, sir, many families here will sponsor missionary hands down. Individual, if we are to prioritize well, Not thinking of, you know, all the clothes, all the cars, all the this. If we prioritize very well as a Christian, before we know, here we will sponsor more than 500 missionaries that will be scattered all over the world doing the work. May the Lord help us to open our eyes and to set our parity well. Yes. In my conclusion, yes, all of us can pray. That's how the conclusion. All of us can pray Every child of God should pray because the last verse says, pray for the God of the harvest. Pray to the God of the harvest and as you pray, he will do it. So all of us can pray. But listen, most of us can give. Some of us can go. So it's not every person that will go on full time. But what we need is most of us can support. And before you know, in short, you may be sitting here. Souls are one there. Because you are part of the support of the one that is working there and souls 
are being won into the kingdom. Beloved, I pray that God will help us to see this dying world the way Christ saw the multitude. In short, outside this four wall church, go outside and see. If you see somebody standing, walking naked, you know that something is wrong. Throw of us. Yes. If you see somebody just take a gun and just kill another person, you know that something is wrong. If you see somebody just do kataka and just want to you know, bring an end to somebody, you know that something is wrong. That thing can be corrected through the power of the Holy Spirit. That thing can be corrected if that lies, life surrender himself or herself to Christ. You will become a changed person all through life. That is what we are supposed to be doing. Jesus said the harvest truly is plentiful but the workers are few. He did not stop there. He said continue to pray. That's the last line. Therefore pray. God of the harvest will send Continue to pray and you will be surprised that God will raise supporters. Continue to pray and you will see God raise men and young men that will go into the ministry. Continue to pray. In short, with these young men that are coming into the pastorate, it's an answer prayer concluded by saying the reason we need to really do it now is because not every missionary, not every pastor that will continue to be in the ministry all through retirement is coming through of us. So as many pastors that are retiring and no other ones that are coming. Do you think the work will still Oh, it will be like what the scripture says. When he finished his ministerial assignment, he returned back home. He returned home. Well, some it may be health challenge that will put a stop, two of us, put a stop to the work. And that old baba, that old man will retire voluntarily because he can't go further with the challenge he's having. So we need more. May the Lord open our eyes to this great work in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, you and I are living in a crucial moment in history. Never before has the need been so great for God's people to rise up and rescue the perishing. Never before has the world population reached such great proportion. As I said, over 7 billion people living in the world today. Even if we could bring one, as I said to Christ, Every second, it will take nearly 200 years to finish the tax. And by then, the population would have grown even further. It is my prayer that God will help us from today to see the multitude the way Christ is seen in Jesus' name. That God will also help us to prioritize our assignment according to our calling. According to our calling. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray.
quietly do you want to say something to the Lord for the message this morning a reminder this morning only through this can we prepare the harvest for his second coming if we are able to see the multitude with compassion and see the urgency of going see the urgency of supporting see the urgency of praying say Lord even I can't move out of this whole world auditorium of Ekwakaura give me direction I want to be part of this mission of yours to rescue the perishing may we again take advantage of those very close to us and be sure that they have salvation of Christ if you are benefiting if you have joy of having Christ in your life today another person needs it say Lord open my eyes and give me grace to be a partaker of this wonderful ministry in Jesus mighty name we pray Praise the Lord.